In this lesson, we're going to look at the first derivative and the second derivative to analyze graphs. And so we're going to start with this idea of we already know that when f is increasing, f prime is positive. And so the question is, what does it look like graphically when f prime is increasing? So we could just draw a couple of examples of um, you know an increasing function. And it could be just a straight line function could be increasing in, in that manner. It looks like concave down. It could be increasing in concave up. And you can see in each one of these scenarios that the first derivative is positive over the interval that we have graphed. The slopes of all the tangent lines are positive for all these graphs. And when f is decreasing we know that the first derivative is negative and so we could draw three scenarios of where a function would be decreasing. Could be just a straight line. We could be decrease, decreasing in concave down or decreasing in concave up. And in each of these three scenarios, the first derivative um, or the slopes of the tangent lines are negative throughout the interval. And so we can use the first derivative to analyze a function and to determine you know, without a graphing calculator, we can determine whether the function is increasing or decreasing. This brings us to the first derivative test. And the first derivative test can be used to find local max and local mins of functions by determining where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing. And so the first derivative test says that at a critical value, if f prime changes from positive to negative, then the function has a local max. So if you were going from increasing to decreasing, that makes sense. You would have a local max at C. And if your second the first derivative changes from negative to positive at a critical value, then it has a local minimum at that critical value. And so if you went from decreasing to increasing, it makes sense that you have a local min. And so in, in the first case, your first derivative would be positive, it would change to negative. So you would have a sign change at that critical value. And in the second case here, you're going from decreasing, so your first derivative is negative, to increasing, where your first derivative is positive. You'd have a side change at C um, from negative to positive. And if your first derivative doesn't, say, doesn't change signs, then it has no local extrema at C. Something like a cubic function where you have, you do have a horizontal tangent, but the first derivative is positive on either side of it and you have no sign change. So let's look at an example. We're going to use the first derivative test. Um, to first, we're going to find the intervals of where the function is increasing and where the function is decreasing by finding the first derivative um, and the critical values. And then we're going to use the first derivative test to find any local extrema. And then we'll confirm this by graphing it on a calculator. If I want to find out where a function is increasing or decreasing, I'm going to find the first derivative. So 3x squared minus 3x. I want to find my critical values, so I set the function, or the first derivative of the function equal to 0. Factor out 3x. Get x minus 1 is equal to 0. So I have two critical values. I have a critical value at x equals 0, and I have a critical value at x equals 1. And so what I want to do is I want to make a sign chart, just like we did before. We used sign charts when we were trying to find out um, you know, where a function was positive or negative in the past. And so we'll mark off 0 and 1. And I'll just label this f prime because that's what we care about right now. And we'll pick test points that are to either side of each of the critical values. So I'll choose negative 1, choose negative point, uh, excuse me, just point 0.5, so 0 0.5, and 2. So when I plug in a negative 1, remember I'm plugging into 3x times x minus 1. So when I put a negative 1 outside here, I get a negative, and inside I'll get another negative. And since a negative times a negative is a positive, 
I'm going to fill in there. And then in between 0 and 1, I'm going to use 0 0.5. So when I put 0 0.5 out here, I'm going to get a positive when I substitute. Inside the x minus 1, I'm going to get a negative. So a negative times a positive is a negative. And my last test point is 2. When I put 2 in the outside, I'll get a plus. 2 in the x minus 1, and I get a plus. So I'm going to have positive in here. So what I know is that f prime is increasing on this interval right here from negative infinity up to 0. It's decreasing from 0 to 1. And it's increasing from 1 to infinity. So I know that I have a local max at x equals 0. And I'm going to have a local min at x equals 1. Okay, so let's summarize and um, answer both of these questions separately. Um, so part A, we first wanted to just find out where the function was increasing and where the function was decreasing. So on the intervals where I have, where the first derivative is positive, so the function is increasing on the intervals from negative infinity to 0, and we don't include the 0. These are open intervals that we're uh, describing here. And it's also increasing from 1 to infinity. So I'll use the little union symbol in between. And the function is decreasing from 0 to 1. Right? So just using the shine chart to find my intervals of increasing and decreasing. And then part B, summarizing again, where I have a sign change from positive to negative, I know I have a local max. Where I have a sign change from negative to positive, I know I have a local min. So let's check this on our calculator. So I've typed the function in my y equals. I played around with it a little bit and I, I decided to set my x and my y windows from negative 5 to 5. It gave me a better picture. So we look at the graph, and we can see that um, we claim to have a local min at x equals 1. So if I trace on 1 and hit enter, that'll give me the actual value of the min. So we have a local min of negative 1 half, or negative 0.5, that occurs when x equals 1. And if we trace on zero and hit enter you can see we can we can get the y value which is the local max value and that is zero and that occurs at x equals zero so it's said to find any local extrema and in that case we do want to actually state the value of that extrema so we have a local minimum of z y equals zero and it basically occurs when x equals one we have a local max of y equals 0 0.5, excuse me, negative 0 0.5, uh, and that occurs when x equals 0. Right. So there's your local max, and there's your local min. And so we're going to be using the first derivative test and, and the second derivative test, which we'll learn later, in conjunction with the calculator. And so we're going to use the calculator to check our work. Um, sometimes we're going to use the analytical um, means to help us find a good window to graph a, a function in. So they really go hand in hand. Um, but either way, on a test or any assessment, you have to show all of your analytical work. You can't simply graph a function and then use the trace keys to find your answers. Um, your answers must be backed by analytical work.